Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in our course Beginners Basics for FreeCAD 0.22 or what will be known as FreeCAD version 1. In our previous video we looked at the difference between the part and part design, understood the difference between solid and surface modeling and where we would use the part or the part design in our modeling process. In this video we're starting our theory lesson we will take a real world object and understand how to digitalize that into our CAD package. We'll identify subjects that can be created with just one profile and start to understand how we will select the operations to create our finished solid form. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look at the theory before we get into some of the exercises. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. In 3D space, we have a number of planes. These are the base planes. We can see we have the XY plane here, which if we look from the top, we have the X and the Y axis running through it with the Z axis that runs perpendicular through that plane. We also have the XZ plane, and this is from the front. So each plane marries up to a viewpoint. We also have the YZ plane. And you see that we have the Y and the Z that lay upon that plane. The reverse of these planes can be modeled upon. And when we create a sketch upon any of these planes, let's say, for instance, let's create a sketch along the XY plane. All points of that sketch will lay coplanar to the plane that we've modeled upon. So you can see those are coplanar along the XY plane. All the planes marry out to the viewpoints. So we have the viewpoints here, which will flip us around to the different planes. It's important to understand the relation between viewpoint and planes when we start to study the profiles of an object. The simplest ones can be depicted upon a single plane. When we analyze a subject that we're going to model, we must imagine it in its silhouette. Therefore, we can identify the profiles we need to create the shape. A profile consists of a 2D view, normally a cross section going through that shape. The subject can be made up of one or more profiles. The key to modeling is to identify the profiles. To do that, it's best to imagine our subject in silhouette. Please note that we've already created these objects. Basically, if it was in our hand, we'd be imagining these as a silhouette. So we'll be looking at this in the physical world rather than the digital. This also applies to reference materials, technical drawings, and hand-drawn sketches. So if we look at the objects in front of us, all these appear different from this viewpoint. So if we look at the top, we can see each one of these is different. So we're currently looking down upon the XY plane. You can see that down here. When we imagine these in silhouette, we actually take away detail essentially simplifying these objects. Here are the same objects in silhouette. This makes our form easier to understand. So we can see from the top view, the XY plane, each one of these is distinct. However, if we bring this round to the XZ plane from the front view, we can see they are all the same shape. So they're all a rectangle. And the same if we bring this around, say this view, they're still a rectangle. Though we're between views, the front and left. In fact, if we rotate this around from any of the views from a side viewpoint, you'll see we have a rectangle profile. Though the rectangles are all different sizes, they remain rectangles. So this tells us one thing, the unchanged nature of the subject's side profile implies that the cross sections through these objects are possibly consistent. So to create these objects, we'd create a profile and then add an operation. We can further assess the profiles by looking from the top view. 
and also examining the bottom view. If they look the same, then any features that have been created are consistent throughout the object. So for instance, with these, we have this shape here, which is the same on the bottom as well. So the two profiles are the same. So to create this object, we only need one profile. The profiles themselves are created by a 2D object, either by a 2D shape or a sketch. So for these objects, you can see we have these sketches in here. Each of these is called a profile. If we was just creating one object, then we'll just have one sketch, this one here. As you can see, it's a pretty simple sketch. It combines geometry of a circle with four circles inside. Once we created our initial sketch, we then look back to our object from the side view. And this gives us an indication of an operation that we need to run upon the sketch. So operations are both additive and subtractive. Additive adds material, subtractive takes it away. With this one, we'll use an additive operation. As the side profile points to a rectangle, this points to a simple extrude, creating height for the object. So we just take a measurement of the real world object from the top to the bottom and add that to our extrude in the form of a length. It must be stressed that this is not the same for all objects. Take this object here. From a side profile, we get a rectangle. So if we're imagining this in silhouette, we still get this profile. But as you can see, there are hidden features in here in the forms of these hollows. So this silhouette is still appearing as a rectangle from the side. This identification process is a mean to progression, a means of breaking the model down into its base shape, allowing for further operations to be identified. If we look, we can see that this has been created by cutting away a number of spheres from a rectangle. If I get rid of the sphere and this one, and look at this from the side, we see we still have a rectangle that we can create from a profile and the same from the top. So we can create this from a rectangle and then add the additional shapes to take away from this shape as a subtractive feature. So you can see it's been cut away from this side. Circling back, if you look at the object and you find that the top and bottom profiles actually differ, but the side profile still looks the same as a rectangle, then this probably implies that despite the variations in the cross sections, then the subject can still be depicted with a single sketch to start with, and then additional sketches added to depict the remaining features. So with this subject, the top profile differs to the bottom profile. So if you think of this, if you had it in your hand, you'll be looking at the top and you'll be looking at the bottom and you see they're different. The side profile looks like a rectangle, which implies the shape of this object is possibly consistent through its length. So we first simplify the object. We start by eliminating the features until we get to a uniform cross section. So we just remove this subtractive feature in here. And you see we have consistent profiles on both sides, the top and the bottom of the object. This means we can use a simple sketch of this object from this view. And then we use an additive operation to extrude this up. We then add an additional sketch on top of one of the faces and then subtract that from our subject. So with a lot of operations in CAD, we can imagine it from a logical flow. As a designer, we ignore any fillets or finishings on there. So any chamfers, surface textures, we envision the object as a simple form, removing those distractions. Then we look at the cross sections. In this example, we're saying, are the cross sections through the object circular? They're not, they're rectangular. This points to that the cross sections through the object are probably the same shape and it's consistent through the length of the object, then those cross sections are also probably the same size. If that is true, then we're probably dealing with a single cross section profile, an object that can be created from a single sketch or a single 2D representation of the profile of the object, the cross section of the object. One thing to note is that the side profile is a rectangle 
so it's straight. In either of those cases, we can use an extrude or for removing material, a pocket. If we have an angle, then we're using taper options or skewing options, which allows an extrude to be a different size at one end to the other. In this video, we've gone through the process of how to identify subjects that can be sketched on a single plane. These typically manifest as simple extrudes or flat objects. However, there are subjects that can be sketched upon a single plane with a single profile that are more organic in nature. We'll go through that in our next theory video. Where we're first going to practice what we've learned with some simple exercises. I'll add a link here to that video once it's available. There'll also be a link in the description of this video. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the next part of this course. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.